65 is in many times, in many parts of the world, a time when you retire. Um, for us, it's absolutely the reverse. I mean, the 65th birthday is the beginning for us of a new era in Australia. And that's really one of the things I want to talk about this morning, about the role we have here, the importance that we, we see in that role and the contribution that hopefully we make to Australia. The issue really is to look at you know, how defence is changing and how it's going to impact Australia and indeed how we working together can make, I think, the defence industry itself more effective in this country. It's rather strange, really, that it's only a few weeks ago that wherever you were in the world, um, we were commemorating the 100th anniversary <clears throat> of the end of World War I and a, a, a war that was supposed to be the war to end all wars at that time. Now, that clearly proved to be a, a faint hope. You know, 20 years later, World War II broke out, and since that time, we've witnessed more and more localized fighting for territory and power, whether that was in Korea, Vietnam, the Gulf, Syria, the Balkans, Afghanistan, and even the Ukraine, as recently as a day or two ago. All these wars, different in style, very, I think, consistently different in their approach to war, but absolutely consistent in brutality. And it is against this background that we've also witnessed the ebb and flow of the Cold War that, that many of us have grown up in between East and West. And increasingly today, an era that not many of us have really grown up in until very recently, a cyber war where the enemy is much less visible and the weapons in the ether potentially, as we all know, much more powerful than any missile delivered from the air. Throughout all of this, Australia, however sort of remote geographically, has played a vital role in committing troops and equipment in pursuit of just causes and the preservation of peace for us all across the globe. And nearer to home, working with regional partners in the humanitarian and disaster response. It's a continued collective commitment and one that everybody appreciates. Looking back, there is absolutely no doubt that the Australian Defence Force has made enormous sacrifices for this country. And it's demonstrated time and time again that it takes a truly collaborative effort between all our armed forces and our defence industries to, to protect us all in the face of severe hostility. It, it's the sense of partnership that really makes the difference. Now, in that same period, BA Systems has been here. It's been working hand in glove with Australia to help provide the, the very best defence equipment and services that it's needed. And it's been done by drawing on the resources, the ideas, the innovative skills of what is truly a global company. So we have a regional emphasis, but we have a global reach. Now, sadly, there is no doubt that we are in a time where the risks are increasing, where aggression is growing, and where nationalism is rising. And these threats are escalating. Now, no one can ignore these risks. And here in Australia, it is very evident, and speaking to ministers yesterday, that your government is clear in its commitment to protect the people it serves, first rule of government, but a real commitment here to do that. Now, the last Defence White Paper was released in 2016. And given the challenges that Australia and the region faces, I'm quite confident that consideration has already started to prepare the ground for the next white paper, which will map out the strategic considerations and expenditure required for the decade ahead. And things are changing. Like many governments, the defense program of today must deliver not just a, a weapons capability, 
but a sovereign capability, bringing jobs, intellectual property to the nation, improving security, reducing dependency, and increasing prosperity. It is a triple ambition now, which is held in this country and by others, let me say, which is the mark of defense in this age. Made in Australia is the message for all potential partners of this government. And it is a message that has guided the principles that have been the foundation for how we have worked in Australia, I have to say for the past six decades. And the need for a strong domestic capability has never been greater as increased instability in the Indo-Pacific region grows. And there are so many people in this room today who clearly see that at first hand all the time. I pick out one quote. I mean, the chief of the Defence Force, General Angus Campbell said, it is a vibrant, extraordinary community of nations, all bound by connectivity of maritime trade and the flow of wealth into what is now 60% of the world's population and indeed the majority of the world's economic activity. This puts this area in a different space to any time before. And there's no doubt that the strong position that Australia holds in this area is clear for all to see. Rising standards of living, low public debt, an affordable welfare state, all part of the great success story. It's a performance that is mirrored by a few and envied, I can tell you from personal experience, by many. It's a remarkable achievement. It's a country that we see that has grown for 27 years without recession. It's, just, it's a statistic that you hear regularly quoted, but it's an achievement that is almost unparalleled. Cumulative growth, three times that of Germany, where median income grows four times faster than America, and public debt percentage is half that of the UK. Staggering statistics. And whilst there's no doubt that the rich mineral assets have helped, there's also been some, some sound policy making that has been an important part of this formula. But the shadow of other nations it continues to be cast over this region, pro projecting strength with military might, building islands as military outposts, claiming territorial rights in open seas, conscious of the success of neighbors and determined in their own pursuit of growth. And it's against this background that Australia must work with its allies to protect its vital trade routes, reinforce its regional power base and police those waters with vessels that are equipped with cutting edge technology and ferocious firepower. And it is to that end that the selection of the BAE Systems Type 26 design to be built in Australia as the Hunter class frigate is so important. It is a vessel that has the latest anti-submarine warfare capability, stealth beneath the waterline and it will form the backbone of the Royal Navy, the Australian Navy, and potentially other Five Eyes nations in the years to come. Be built in Adelaide. It will contribute an estimated $17 billion to Australia's GDP over the life of the contract. Double that in truth, if you count the trickle down effect that this has on all the other SMEs and supply base in this country. It will sustain at peak an additional 6,300 jobs and it will provide Australia with first class intellectual property. It'll be, I think, an outstanding domestic industry with terrific export opportunity. And that's never previously been enjoyed on this scale in this country. And in delivering these commitments, BA systems will help fill the gap left behind by 
the decline of other industries, like the sad loss of the car industry. But I think more importantly, it's going to provide a foundation for the training of young people in skills and technology that will underpin their future and hone Australia's competitive edge. Today, the STEM-based roles make up 60% of our Australian workforce. But world demand is expanding for these skills, and the talent pool itself, therefore, is shrinking. That's why, as a company, we put $4 million into apprenticeships each year, into the training of such young people. And it isn't just in our own self-interest, but it's in the nation's interest. And it is ultimately by having good people, well-trained, with appropriate skills, that we as a company can deliver productivity that is 20% higher than the national average. And that's important, clearly, to the wealth creation of the country itself. Now, as a company, we'll maintain this commitment. Government, defence industry, academia, all working together in lockstep to ensure we do have the skills we need here today and I think very importantly are all match fit for the future that faces us. Of course defence in all domains continues to evolve at a rapid pace. It's unlikely that the ninth frigate we built will be exactly the same as the first one. Technology will continue to change, we will incorporate it while trying to keep the core design as solid as possible. Under sea, we will see a new generation of submarines. In the sky, with the F-35, a joint strike fighter. And in the ether, an invisible and deadly cyber threat growing in risk as we constantly seek to, to challenge those that are constantly seeking to challenge us. And looking forward, there's going to be a need for all our weapons to operate in a network on an integrated manner across land, sea, air, and cyber. Weapons that we are developing increasing in accuracy, limiting collateral damage. Platforms all built for stealth, defying detection. Manned and unmanned working together in harmony. A man in the loop, very important, always in control but managing a swarm capability, linking men, machines, through lasers and sensors with technology at its core. This is happening now, and the pace of that can only escalate. Now, in all of these areas, BA Systems is at the forefront, and it remains in partnership with Australia, growing over the last 65 years from trialling the first generation of air defence missile systems at the Woomera test range in South Australia to today. I, I had a relative years ago who came to this country to work at the Woomera test range. It seemed then utter science fiction. But where we are today is building on those foundations. We have over 3,200 employees here. We're contributing now over a billion dollars to the Australian economy through participation in the key defence programmes, the Joint Strike Fighter, the Over the Horizon Radar Network, Cyber Security, and of course now the Hunter Class Frigate. As chairman of the company, I want to emphasise just how appreciative we are of the trust that has been placed in us and enabling us to participate in programmes which we are very proud to be associated with and utterly determined to deliver for you all. We are a business deeply rooted here in Australia. We're proudly led by an Australian, Gabby Costigan, who is here today and familiar, I know, to many of you, who will now serve her country again, having been an ex-serving officer in the military, by delivering the most advanced warship of its kind in the world. This isn't a transactional relationship. It is a foundation stone at which I think we can jointly build a sustained 
and long-term industrial partnership, which should be important to this country for many, many years to come. Designed and developed by BAE Systems, made in Australia, by Australians, for Australia. It's a very powerful combination. Thank you.